If you remember, in the previous video, I talked about reachable time controllability in state space representation for both continuous and discrete time systems. Now I will talk about observability, which is also a very important concept, but unlike reachable time controllability, there is no like uh, kind of ambiguity between discrete time and control systems. In general, we use the same and similar techniques and same definitions to test observability and talk about uh, later observer design. Okay, so what is observability? Before talking about observability, so it's kind of an intuitive, but uh, we start talking about an unobservable state, not an observable state. Okay, so, and it's kind of uh, related to like the mathematical and linear algebra perspective, but let's talk about an unobservable state. Okay, for continuous time systems, okay, continuous time, x naught is, okay, unobservable, unobservable. So, a state is unobservable, okay, if, okay, when x zero is equal to x o, and uh, for all possible u of k, okay, so it's different. So, for all possible of u of k, y of k, is technically equal to y zero of k, where x zero is equal to zero. So what does it mean? Uh, we have an initial condition and we call it unobservable. Okay, and we make a test. It's like a uh, test. Okay, so we have input u of k, and we have initial condition. Okay, this is system, and we have output. Okay, in a different test, we apply the same input inputs but now initial condition is zero is zero and we obtain another y of k so if your output with unobservable state or candidate is equal to your output where initial condition equals zero which means that this state is technically unobservable because we cannot observe it at output or we cannot discriminate it from zero initial condition because it's the effect on the system is same as a no initial condition which means it's kind of technically not affecting output of the system. It's very important. Okay, good. So uh, it's kind of uh, easy to understand that this is an unobservable state. And uh, as you can see, I directly started with the discrete time definition. So for continuous time, it is very easy. So uh, for continuous time systems, it's the same. X naught is unobservable if X zero is equal to technically X zero. So this is, okay, it should be critical. And for all possible of u of t, okay, uh, if y of t is equal to y0 of t, where in this case x0 is equal to 0, then the state is unobserved. So technically the definition is exactly the same. Okay, so we test a signal or a, a state variable in terms of observability. Uh, in this case, we make an experiment with different kind of inputs. Okay, and we observe the outputs. If these outputs are indistinguishable for the case when the initial condition is equal to zero, in both cases, the state is called unobservable. Okay, good. So why we talk, uh, started talking about unobservable states, I will tell you now. Okay, because set of all unobservable states, let's call it like this, these are unobservable states, it forms a linear vector space, and it is a subset of Rn. Okay, so set of all observable states is not a vector space. For this reason, we're starting talking about the set of all unobservable states, and it's a subspace of Rn. Okay, and uh, what we want is because uh, we want this set for full reachability to be equal to zero. Okay, if only unobservable state is the origin, then system is fully reachable. Uh, or what we do is uh, we need to test that dimension of O should be equal to zero, okay? And we call, uh, told the system, uh, tell the system is it fully observable. But if your observable set is non-trivial such that it covers like uh, different kind of vector spaces, so it can be Rn or Rn minus two or something else, then the system is called unobservable because there is a set, there is space that we cannot distinguish from the zero initial condition. Okay, good. And now, what's next? The obvious next step is testing observability for both continuous and discrete time systems. Okay, so for continuous time systems, if you remember, we construct observability matrix, which is this, C, C, A, it goes like this, C to the power N minus 1, okay? 
And uh, in the terms of observability, we don't care what's happening at the input. Okay, so we don't uh, care to be an edge matrices. Okay, and uh, what we look at that for is this system to be observable, rank of O should be equal to N. Okay, so if it's a square matrix, you can look at the determinant, the term should be not equal to zero. But for non square matrices, we look at the rank of the observable matrix, or similarly, we can look at the range space of O and it should be equal to Rn. Okay, or similarly, we can look at the null space of the O matrix and we want the null space of the matrix, dimension of the null space of the O matrix, to be equal to zero because null space of the observable matrix is the set of all observ unobservable states of the system and we want it to be a trivial case uh, such that it only covers the zero or the origin initial condition. Okay, so this is the observability for continuous time systems. So what is observability or how we can test in this time system? So in the lecture notes, I uh, provide you some of the proofs. They are very cool and it's really important if you try to understand the proofs and derivations. But let me show you the result and you will like it. Okay, so we construct observability matrix, which is equal to C, C, G, C, G to power M minus one. It's the same. So technically, the construction of the observable matrix is exactly the same. We only use C and system matrix G. In this case, A is G. And we look at the same conditions to test the observability for discrete time systems. And in terms of observability, we don't have any kind of ambiguity or difference between continuous and discrete time systems. Okay. So if it, a system is fully reachable, it's fully reachable. Oh, no, sorry. It's fully observable. It's fully observable. We don't have any like related but different condition. We have uh, detectability, but it's a different topic, and I will not go uh, detectable in this course. It's kind of out of scope of this course. So basically, this is the observable thing. Okay, very good. So what we can do, let's see. Okay, do we have, okay, we have an example uh, for both reachability and observability. Okay, that's great. So this is our system matrix. Okay. 0, 1, 1, 0, that's great. This is x of k plus 0, 1, u of k. And y of k is equal to 1 minus 1 x of k. That's great. So there's a small mistake. It's instead of x of t, it will be x of k. Good. So the question is, is the system fully reachable? The second question is, is the system fully observable? Let's construct the uh, reachable to matrix, which is equal to b. Okay, or let's say uh, E, okay, that's fine. Zero, one, and A times B. So what is A times B? Okay, one, zero. Okay, this is our ritual to matrix. So what is the rank of this matrix? So it's a square matrix, we can look at the determinant, and as you can see, determinant of M is not equal to zero. But let's look at the rank. What is the rank? Number of little independent columns, and also in this case, the rows. So this is obviously linearly independent from the other column. So rank of M is equal to two. So the system is fully reachable. That's it, okay? Good, now let's construct the observed metric. We start the C matrix and times C times a G matrix or uh, A matrix, whatever you say. Okay, if I multiply this, with uh, this vector, I think I will obtain minus one and one. That's great. Okay, so let's look at this. Okay, so what's that? Uh, let's look at the determinant. Determinant of O is equal to one minus one is equal to zero. So let's look, look at the rank. So one minus one, minus one, one. As you can see, they are linear independent because if I multiply the first vector with minus one, I will obtain the second one. So what is the rank? Rank of O is equal to one. So it means that the system is not fully observable. It's not an observable system, okay? So the system is reachable, but not observable. Now I will talk about something. And first I will show you the result. Then I will uh, give you the like reasoning and details that it's important. Okay, good. So it's uh, reachable, but not observable. Now. Let's clean everything and let's compute the transfer function of the system, right? I just wanted to compute the transfer function because there is a problem in the system, right? It, it's it's ritual, but it's not observable. So we cannot observe some states. It's a vector space. Actually, we 
exactly cannot observe half of the state because it's a two-dimensional system and unobservable subdimensional unobservable subspace equal to one. Okay, it should give you a hint about your transfer function. Good. So let's compute the a transfer function. H of z is equal to c c i minus g inverse times h. Okay, that's great. This is equal to one minus one. This is equal to c minus one minus one z to the power minus one zero one. That's great. H of c is equal to okay one minus one. Okay, so I, if I take the inverse. I will obtain something like this, z, 1, 1, z, okay, this is relatively easy, okay, 0, 1, and I have here z square minus 1, okay, if I simplify this, let me show you the result, it will be equal to minus c minus 1 divided by z square minus 1, okay, it's a second order transform function, but let's look at this, it has poles, 1 at minus 1, this at pole at 1, oh, great, so there's a pole cancellation, this is equal to minus 1 divided by c plus 1. Okay, now it is interesting, right? Okay, the system is unobservable. And we see that there's a polar cancellation, so it means that your state space is not minimal. Okay, this is nice. Good. Now let's try to technically uh, figure out what it's, what's happening. If your system is fully reachable, and observable, okay? And let's say that x is an element of Rn, okay? Then first of all, we know that state space representation is minimal, okay? It's a minimal representation because when you obtain the transfer function, it is nth order. If it's fully reachable and observable, state space representation is minimal and transfer function is nth order. But Let's assume that we have a case. It's not reachable, reachable, okay, and maybe it can be observable. Okay, in this case, we know that state space representation is not minimal, minimal, okay, and transfer function will be m to order where m is less than n. But we cannot directly say what is m. Okay, we should look at the dimension of unobservable space or unreachable space and try to figure out that. Okay, and I will talk about this later, but the idea is if your system is not reachable or not observable, one of them is enough, you know that state space representation is not minimal and you know that transfer function will have an order which is less than the original order, the order of the state space. Okay, it can be both unobservable and unreachable, and in this case, we know that there is some problem with that, but in order to get the exact understanding of the order of the transform function, you should be looking at the like dimension of the reachable subspace, dimension of the observable subspace, and if the system is fully not fully reachable and not fully observable, it can be a little bit tricky. These are kind of a little bit complete, uh, complicated mathematical problems, but at least you can say that uh, if your state space representation is not reachable or is not observable, and it's a real or, whatever is okay, you know that it's not minimal, and of course, you know that transfer function has an order which is less than n. Okay, so actually, if your system is, for example, observable, but not reachable. Okay, so one of them. It's not both of them. Okay, and let's assume that we have n ordered system. We know that it's not minimal. We know that transfer function has an order of m which is less than n. Can we uh, technically uh, estimate m, which is uh, very easy in this case? Okay, we have an reachable to matrix, okay, and we computed its rank, okay. Its rank is equal to m, right? Okay, so what does it mean? The rank of the reachable to matrix, if your observable to matrix is a full rank and it is fully observable, really dictates the order of the transfer function. Similarly, if it's your system is fully reachable, okay, fully reachable, fully reachable, but not observable, Rank F observable matrix will dictate the order of the transfer function. 